Good morning and welcome to our online church this morning. You are very welcome, especially if you are a visitor with us. We want to give you a warm welcome. Now, if you want to become part of our Doxa Day of Olgeheuvel campus, you can go on our website and click on the online info desk. All information will be there for you. Now, our kids also have an online ministry experience and the link will be in the chat box right now. Now, COVID-19 has impacted all households and the church as well. So we want to thank you for each contributions that we've already received. But contributing financially is not only part of our worship, it is a declaration of faith. In order for us to have trees, we need to have seed in the ground. And we want to give you this opportunity this morning to sow a seed of faith, trusting God for provision where you are. All the information is on the screen right now. And we are trusting for God for breakthrough in your finances right now. We pray that you would enjoy the service.
for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, the team and I were together and we were planning and praying into our next sermon series. And as we did that, we really felt God speaking to our hearts and uh, God gave us this promise in Psalms 37 verse 19. The Passion Translation reads, Even in a time of disaster, He will watch over them and they will always have more than enough no matter what happens. Man, that's such a relevant promise for a time like this. It's such a beautiful promise for all of us. God says there's no disaster big enough that I cannot handle it. No disaster that will catch me unaware of God. You know, God says in the midst of the promise, I will ensure that you will always have more than enough. And so today we are kicking off that new sermon series that we were planning. We're calling it Egypt. Because think about this. Egypt messes with a promise like this. Why? Because Egypt is, is a terrible place for the Israelites in the Bible. Egypt was that place where they became the slaves of the Egyptians. And the Bible says, Exodus 1 verse 11, you know, that um, th they put brutal slave drivers over them. They made their lives very difficult. Now this qualifies as a disaster for them. But then things don't get better in the midst of the disaster. It gets worse because the Egyptians then decide to start killing the baby boys. You know, this was an attempt to contain the population growth of the Israelites. And they started killing the baby boys. Now, this is traumatic. This is, this is terrible. But what makes it even worse is that it happens within the context of a promise that God gave to His people saying that I will make you a great nation. You will multiply. So on the one hand, you have this promise of multiplication, of becoming a great nation. On the other hand, you have the reality of the Egyptians killing your children. And so I can imagine the struggle to hold on to a promise when a disaster like that becomes part of your reality. And so you see, for us, yes, the tension, the tension lies in the fact that the path to the promise leads through Egypt. Let me say that again. The path to the promise leads through Egypt. You see, what's important here is there will always be some sort of an Egypt within our context. And the way we respond to Egypt, the way we understand Egypt, the way we think about Egypt becomes very important. And so that's why we're going to unpack this uh, in the next couple of weeks as we go into this sermon series. You see, Egypt represents different things 
for different people. For some people, Egypt is that difficult place, that, that place of oppression, that place of disaster, that place of bondage. It's a place of great discomfort, and we want to talk about that. But then also, on the other hand, for some people, Egypt is the opposite. Egypt is a comfort zone. It's a place where you become complacent, and next week we will get into that. But there's a third option. Egypt can also represent God's providence in unexpected places. You see, when we think about Egypt, when we remember Egypt in a, in a biblical context, most of the time we will think about Egypt as that place where God came to deliver His people from, that terrible place where God had to rescue His people from. That's the Exodus story, but... It's obvious the story doesn't start with God's people leaving Egypt. It starts with God's people coming into Egypt. That's what we want to talk about today. That's the story of Joseph. We actually spoke about that two weeks ago, how God led Joseph to Egypt, how he elevated him to a, a place of authority, a position of authority, so that God could use him to save many lives, including the lives of his own family. It was a disaster. A famine broke out. There was no food. And Joseph sends for his father, Jacob, to bring him and his whole family to Egypt so that they would survive this famine. And now Jacob, yes, the story. This is the story of the people of God going into Egypt. Jacob is on his way to Egypt. And then on his way there, God speaks to Jacob. He's an old man by now, 130 years old. And God says to him, Genesis 46 verse, verse 3, I am God, the voice said, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will see to it that you become a great nation there. I will go with you down to Egypt and I will bring your descendants back again. But you will die in Egypt with Joseph at your side. Now here's the context that you need to hear first. Is that remember Jacob was under the impression that his son Joseph was dead. For the, last, for the past 22 years, Joseph lived with the understanding that my son died. And now he gets, the, he gets the message, the information that Joseph is alive. And I can imagine the excitement in his heart to be able to see his son again after 22 years thinking that he had died. And he's on his way to Egypt to go see his son. But the Bible says God speaks to Jacob, says to him, Jacob, don't be afraid to go to Egypt. Why would God say that? It's because God knew exactly what was going on in Jacob's heart. God saw right into his heart. And let me say this right now, is that God sees into your heart. God knows the questions that you are struggling with. God knows the fear in your heart. You know, you might, you might seem like you've got it all together and everybody around you think you do, but God sees straight through that and He sees your tears and He sees your questions and He knows where you are at. And He's saying to you, don't be afraid of your Egypt. I am with you. And so when I thought about this, I, you know, I started thinking, well, here's the question that Jacob was probably struggling with is, God, why Egypt? Why Egypt? Because you see, when, when Jacob went through his life, he, he had to deal with many difficult situations. But the one thing he always had to hold on to was the promise that God gave to his grandfather Abraham. And he now was the custodian of that promise. He became the bearer of the promise and he could still hold on to that and still believe God and still trust God in that situation. But all of a sudden... He is now on his way to a very uncertain and unexpected place, a place called Egypt. Egypt was not his destination. It was not part of God's promise, but it seemed to be part of God's plan. 
You see, at that point in his life, Jacob was already living in the promised land, the land that God had promised to his father Isaac and his grandfather uh, Abraham. He was living there. But yes, another fact is that although they were living there, they weren't a great nation yet. They were but a small family living in uh, the promised land. And they didn't occupy the promised land. They, Jacob just owned some property there. And so yes, the problem is that you know, they were surrounded by enemies that could destroy them in a moment. And when a disaster broke out, they were vulnerable. They, they could be wiped out in, in just a moment. And so God is now taking them to Egypt to protect them, to provide for them, and to make them a great nation. The small family would become a great nation in Egypt. The path to the promise leads through Egypt. Yes, my point, what I want to share with you today, often God's path for your life leads through unexpected places. Places where you never thought you would go. You know, we are navigating uncharted waters. Many of you are stepping into uncertain and unexpected places in your life where you didn't think you would go. And it's unnerving and unsettling to say the least. But my message to you this morning is that God says there's something that you can hold on to. And the, the truth of that is, is that this unexpected place, this Egypt in your life is not your destination. It is not the promise but it is part of my plan and that I am there right there with you. But don't forget that my promise still stands. For some of you, you need to hear that God has made promises personally to you and maybe you've forgotten that promises. Maybe you've given up on them. God is reminding you saying that my promise is true. It will always remain true. Don't give up on the promises in my word. Don't give up on the promise that I gave you. Because the path might lead to Egypt, but that is not the destination. It is just part of the plan. And as I was pondering on this, I remember a story I heard long ago. It's a story about a man that was driving in his car uh, on a gravel road and, and the car had blown a fuse, so he had no lights. It was in the middle of the night. It was pitch dark. And he was driving very slowly because he could see but a few feet in front of him. And he keep, kept his eyes focused on the road just to see where he was going. And now and again, he would lift his gaze and, and just look ahead and see a dim light, the light a few kilometers away that he knew that was his destination. And then all of a sudden, you know, he brought the, the car to a standstill and he got out of the car and he walked a little ways to his right and, and surely he saw it right there was a road going towards his right. And for the life of him, he couldn't understand why his GPS would tell him to take a right turn at this point. Because you see, when he looked in front of him, he could still see the road going in that direction and he could see the light that was the direction um, uh, that the, the, the road was going towards was towards his destination. He could see the light, the dim light of his destination. And so he had to make this choice. Am I going to just keep going, ignore the GPS, or will I follow the instructions of the GPS and take a right turn here? He got into his car and he decided he's going to stick with what the GPS is telling him. And so he took a right turn and, and now, you know, he, he, he was still just being able to see just a couple of feet in front of him. But, but n not only that, is when he looked over his shoulder, he could see the dim light of his de destination growing even dimmer and dimmer till eventually he could see it no more. And it, at that point, he knew you know, that he no longer had the assurance of seeing the light of his destination in front of him. All he had now was uh, all, all he could hope for all, all he could hold on to was the integrity of his GPS. And so he kept driving, 
just seeing just a couple of feet in front of him, kept driving slowly, slowly going forward, further and further away from that place where he could still see the light. Eventually the, the road turned and eventually it turned again and eventually it started climbing up a hill and at the top of the hill, all of a sudden there was a bright light and he knew this was the place, this was his destination and it's at that moment that his GPS uh, announced that you have reached your destination. And he got out of the car and he could get into a room and he could, you know, rest his eyes, rest from a very long and weary, stressful night. The next morning he got up and he was holding a cup of coffee in his hand as he gazed out of the window. And when he looked out of the window, he could see clearly that point, that place where his GPS told him to turn right. And he started smiling because, because all of a sudden he understood why. You see, at that point, right in front of him was a vast lake. And if he had driven his car straight forward the previous night, he would have driven right into the lake. And so his GPS guided him safely around a danger he didn't even know existed. You see, none of us expected that this is the place that we're going to find ourselves in July 2020. None of us see, saw this coming. This is uncharted territory. This is unfamiliar space. You know, and it's this, this, this place that we don't understand. Why did we have to take this detour? Lord, why are we going in this direction? God is saying, even though you can't see the destination, even though perhaps you can't see that light that's giving you hope that you are going in the right direction, you had your hope set that this is the way I'm going to go, this is what's going to happen this year, I have made my plans, and now I had to take an unexpected right turn. God is saying, trust in the integrity of my Holy Spirit that's guiding you uh, through a, a time that is maybe dangerous, but that I am there and I will guide you through it. Listen again to the words of this promise. Even in a time of disaster, He will watch over you and, he will all, and you will always have more than enough. Maybe your Egypt right now is a place, an unfamiliar, uncertain place, but God is saying to you, Trust me. Don't be afraid. Trust me. This might be my way of protecting you, of guiding you, of providing for you in a way that might not make sense right now. But will you just trust me? Let's pray. Father, today we want to put our trust in you. As we're stepping into this unfamiliar space, as we're walking through a place where we say, this can't be the destination, this can't be the promise, and you're saying, yes, you are right, this is not my promise for you, this is not my destination for you, I have so much more for you, but I will lead you there, I will take you there, will you trust me, will you come with me, and when I say take a right, will you go right, and when I say move forward, will you move forward even when you cannot see the place exactly where I'm going to lead you to, will you still put your hope and your faith and your trust in me? God says my promise still stands and I will bring it to a fulfillment in Jesus' name. May God bless you today as you just keep on navigating your way forward, trusting God, listening to the voice of His Holy Spirit when He says turn right. Take a lift so you keep going. May God bless you. We will go through this Egypt. Amen. So thank you for joining us this morning. It was great having you. We invite you to our worship evening tonight, 11 minutes past six, in our 611 service. We can't wait to have you. I hope you have a blessed week, but say hi to us in the chat box. Keep well.